Senator Scott Brown. But, uh, you can call me Scott. <laughs> oh, hi, Barbara. How's your health care plan going? You know, I'm against the public option, but I can't offer you a pubic option. <laughs> because I just found a lump in my underpants. Oh, God. That was newly elected Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown getting the SNL treatment this weekend. But he also made an actual appearance on Sunday on ABC's This Week, guest hosted by, now let me check the name again, Barbara Walters. Right. She must be new on TV. Take a look. This is pretty... <laughs> this is pretty raw <laughs> stuff. Okay. This so, Cosmo, 1982 Cosmo. Let's not get carried away here. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. I think if someone's qualified, regardless of what they did in their youth, we all make mistakes. I'm not perfect. And do I regret doing that? No. Because if I hadn't done that, I never would have been sitting here with you. It's all connected. Joining me to discuss this appearance are Arianna Huffington, the co-founder and managing editor of the Huffington Post, and CNN political correspondent Candy Crowley, the new host of CNN State of the Union. Ladies, Ariana Brown says he wouldn't be where he is today without that Cosmo spread, which I thought was an odd thing to say. Is that truth or spin? What does it mean? You know what? I actually believe that whatever we do in our lives, especially our failures, somehow are all connected to the successes we have. Certainly it's true in my own life. I tell my daughters that all the time. Don't be afraid of trying something that doesn't work. In his case, that was a pretty good centerfold. I don't know precisely how it led him to be the senator-elect from Massachusetts, but I believe him. Uh, there is a kind of uh, magic to these connections in our lives. That's interesting. Candy, do you, do you think that youthful indiscretions now mean nothing in politics anymore? I think it probably depends on the indiscretion, but uh, somebody posing naked with a staple in the appropriate place, uh, it doesn't count anymore, you know. And we have too many mature indiscretions going on now to worry about what somebody did, you know, 20, 25 years ago, and you just talked about that. And uh, so, I, yes, I think depending on what it is, you certainly can get by it in, in a way that maybe you always weren't in a time that was more sensitive to these sort of things. I think also the fact that he's relaxed about it and he isn't, right. you know, he's not making a Absolutely. big thing, it probably helps. Yes. Now, Brown also talked about his views on abortion. Listen to this. You know, Roe v. Wade is the law of the land, but I think we need to do more to reduce the amount of abortions. And, and the difference between me and maybe others is that I'm very, very uh, I'm against partial birth abortions. I'm against federal funding of abortions. And I believe in a strong parental consent notification law. And, and we should do more for adoptions. But just still pro-choice. Yes, because I feel this issue is best handled between a woman and her doctor and, 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 and her family. Wow. It should be handled between a woman and her doctor and her family. I don't think I've ever heard a Republican say those words before. Have you, Ariana? Oh, yes, there are pro-choice Republicans. We just don't hear as much from them. But he's a pro-choice Republican from Massachusetts. You know, uh, obviously, he is not um, an arch-conservative. But what was interesting is when Barbara asked him about don't ask, don't tell, which he uh, wants to actually end, he was very wishy-washy, and that kind of concerns me. Already, before he's even in Washington, he's beginning to adopt some of the Washington ways of trying to have it both ways, and that would mm -hmm. be a shame, because part of what made him appealing was this kind of easy way he had about him and his occasional independence. Right. This, Candy, I was going to go there. I mean, once he goes to Washington, it's all going to change, isn't it? Well, it does change. I think there's, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, how your mother always used to say, now there's a certain way you talk when your grandmother's in the room, and then there's a way you talk with your brothers. So I, th I think it's kind of the same way. In his state, I, he is uh, almost the perfect Republican. He has um, some moderate uh, to more liberal social views, depending on where you are on the conservative uh, side of things. Uh -huh. um, but he remains a fiscal conservative, as far as we can tell. He will change, but also there, there are are those within the Republican Party uh, who are going to look at Scott Brown as proof positive that, in fact, the Republican Party doesn't have to go hard right to be successful, particularly in places like Massachusetts. So it will be interesting to watch him as he comes up mm -hmm. against the Republicans in some of these votes. But fiscally, and that's what this year is all about, those, those fiscal votes, uh, he's going to be with them. I think just on the don't ask, don't tell, what a lot of Republicans I've found have been doing uh, when I've talked to them or the 
the past couple of weeks is waiting to hear the military. They're uh -huh. kind of waiting for that sign off. Okay. Also on that same show, a debate broke out between two of Barbara's guests. One was Fox News President Roger Ailes, and the other one was you, Ariana. <laughs> Watch. There's a tradition, as the historian Richard Hofstadter said, in American politics, of the paranoid style. And the paranoid style is dangerous when there is real pain out there. I mean, with well, I agree with you. I read something on your blog that said I looked like J. Edgar Hoover. I had a face like a fist, and I was essentially a malignant tumor. Well, that and I thought, and then he that got nasty after that. That was never by anybody that we then approved. he really of. went nasty, and I thought, gee, maybe Ariana had to cut this out. Ariana, clear this whole thing up now, because I read the transcript now of the writer, the blogger, and it's uh, Roger just distorted the whole thing, as far as I could tell. Yes. Well, first of all, there's a big distinction between who your anchors are, who are your employees and what they're saying, and uh, what your bloggers are saying. And in our case, of course, uh, what he said, what our blogger that he was quoting said, was distorted by Roger because he never called him a tumor. He said Fox was a, a tumor uh, on American society, which is a legitimate view that many people hold. But more important is the fact that Roger never really uh, answered my fundamental charge, which is that there is Glenn Beck warning his audience that they are going to be the next victim of the killing spree, uh, that they are going to be slaughtered, mm -hmm. that health care uh, healthcare reform is going to be the end of America as we know it. Now, you could say these are just um, fantastical statements, but at a time of real pain, at a time of real anxiety out there, it is dangerous to be making statements like that that are completely paranoid, based on no fact at all. And Roger actually said that uh, when, when Glenn Beck made these statements, he was referring to Stalin and Hitler, where we have on the side Glenn Beck saying these things, and he wasn't referring to Stalin or uh -huh. Hitler. He was referring to the Obama administration. As you know, as long as Glenn, Beck's, uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn Beck gets those ratings, Roger Ailes is going to defend him. That's the way it goes. Let me just end this interview with Candy because this is it's kind of a special day because you're going to be starting a new talk show on Sunday, and we're all excited for you. You're the first woman on Sunday Talk to be hosting a show. It's pretty exciting. It's, what's interesting, though, is when I first now, I, I do want to give a shout out to Koki Roberts, who co-hosted the ABC Sunday show with Sam Donaldson for a time. I'm told Leslie Stahl at one point uh, for a short period of time did host uh, the CBS uh, the CBS Sunday venue, but it is it is tremendously exciting. But I thought of it first as a journalist and then my mailbox got flooded with hip hip hoorays from very young women and I yes. was that surprised me more than anything I expected to hear it from women my age uh, but I didn't yes. expect to hear it from young people